welcome to the Diesel Power Challenge presented by XDP. This event is the eighth mile trailer tow. Well, it was Sir Isaac Newton a couple hundred years ago that said an object at rest wants to stay at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. In this case, our object at rest is an 11,000 pound combination of a John Deere skid steer and a trailer. The unbalanced force is gonna be applied by diesel pickup trucks that make somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,000 horsepower and in some cases, more than 2,000 foot-pounds of torque. This is the eighth mile trailer tow. So Troy Sankey will lead us off here in this eighth mile trailer towing competition. It's a sprint race. He will stage the truck, the light will turn green, and he will hustle that truck to the eighth mile as quickly as possible. This is where we can see some severe driveline issues, sticky drag strip, lots of torque, and an aggressive throttle pedal can all lead to pretty crazy action here as we get ready to run down the eighth mile with Troy Sankey. So the great equalizer in today's eighth mile trailer towing challenge is what you're looking at right there. Bandemir Speedway, the famed drag strip outside of Denver, Colorado. What's vastly different about this surface than anything the drivers have been on so far at this event is the fact that it's prepared concrete. This rubber, this black layer you see on here, is built up from drag slicks and other tires running down this track. It's very sticky, and to even enhance that stickiness more, the track applies what's known as traction compound, which is essentially a type of rubber cement that helps glue the tires to the racetrack. All this adds up to the fact that when these drivers hammer on the throttle, they're not gonna have tire spin. They're gonna dead hook and all the components in the driveline from the axles to the transmission to the universal joints will be stressed to their absolute limits and in some cases beyond. This is the event, not the sled pull. Believe it or not, this is the event that we see the most damage at and mainly it's because of this incredibly sticky surface here at Bandemir. Reaction time does not matter in this competition. It only matters the elapsed time to get the truck from the starting line to the eighth mile. So he's gonna take his time and spool the turbos. He's gonna try to gently roll out of the throttle and apply all that power. The truck annihilating the front tires are spinning very hard, he pedaled. Gets back into the throttle and once again, look at it start to snake the trailer by the eighth mile. Holy cow, look at it wagging the tail big time as he goes down through there. Whoa. A very good example of what the balance of this event is. You gotta get the truck moving. You saw that thing come up on the pipe again at about 330 feet, it just wiped the tires out two or three times. Uh, we're, we are keeping the scoreboards off to kind of hide the elapsed times here. We'll reveal them all at the end. But that was an impressive run. If for nothing else, we saw how difficult it is to get that load moving. Wow. Matt, you're second on the drag strip here for our eighth mile trailer towing deal. Um, do you drag race this truck much at home? Yeah, it's usually my main hobby with it. Okay. Have you ever done it with 11,000 pounds strapped to the back of the truck? That I have not. <laughs> Just a quick strategy question. How are you going to try to get this thing off the starting line? I'm bringing the boost up, try to bring out the hole gently, but then give her hell. So. Sounds good, man. Good luck. was pretty much a picture perfect run for Matt Kaufman. You saw he built the boost up, rolled the truck out of the hole, went into the power, no wheel spin, went right down the racetrack. The one thing it did do that was weird is it kind of pulled the motor down enough that it upshifted right when it got to the eighth mile. But Matt Kaufman, picture perfect. We're not giving you the elapsed time yet, but I can tell you that's probably the best run we've seen today. All right, Dan Howard rolling up here onto the drag strip. You've had a little bit of experience pulling this thing around the obstacle course. Uh, does it give you a sense of how aggressive you can get trying to get this out of the hole without blowing the tires off? Yeah, I think we'll have a little bit more spool up on this one. A um, little worried about trying to hit it too hard up there on the track. Hopefully with it being a little bit straighter stretch, we'll get her going. So. Are you gonna leave it first or higher gear? Uh, I think I'm gonna try first and then I'll start shifting from there, see what she does. All right, man, go to work, good luck. Uh, That was cool. Dan Howard comes off the starting line. You heard him slip the clutch. Not too bad. Worked his way through three gears going down the racetrack, and you heard it. First gear very short, second a little longer, and he grabbed third, and it hung on there through the eighth mile. So pretty strong performance out of uh, Dan Howard. Not the biggest horsepower truck we have, but a very respectable deal, especially when you're grabbing your own gears out there. All right, LeVon Miller coming on up with the trailer here. 
You had a surprisingly strong performance in the uh, the obstacle course, despite your lack of power steering. Uh, we saw you make a little bit of a test launch up there. How'd the truck feel uh, leaving under power? Really good. It's still launched straight. Uh, it didn't seem to torque steer at all. That's what I was concerned about. If I launch it and it head for the wall, that I can sure get out of it. But it wanted to go straight, so hopefully it'll stay straight with the trailer behind me, and I, I think it's safe. Wow, LeVon Miller, we talked about it. We asked him about the lack of power steering, and you saw what happened when he got all on the power. That thing just started to drive itself into the wall. He counter-steered all the way through the eighth mile, never lifted off the throttle, so a pretty exciting run, and we can only imagine what it looked like inside the cab. LeVon Miller, probably more exciting than he wanted, but a great run to watch. Danik St. Pierre strapping in the uh, Cummins-powered Ram truck here. Final check of the gauge is getting ready to run down the course. What, uh, what if anything, are you going to be paying attention to most here headed down the racetrack? Probably try to just roll into it, I guess. I mean, I'm not sure how to take off ex exactly. I saw a few competitors go so far. I have an idea, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to try something. in a good way. We did see him haze the tires, though. It smoked the front tires, and it started to get some smoke off the rear tires. All right, West Beach rolling up to the starting line here. You've been here before. You've seen the other guys run down. Uh, you're going to maintain your strategy from last year, just try to get off the starting line, minimize the wheel spin, and then feed the power to it? Yeah, we're going to try the same thing as last year. Worked good for us then, so hopefully it will again. What, uh, in terms of gauges headed down the racetrack, you're looking at boost or pyrometer? What are you paying attention to to make sure the thing's happy? None of them. <laughs> So we saw West Beach head down the racetrack, and what he left behind was this trail of rubber shards. If you can look down the track from our vantage point, he absolutely shredded the tires off the back of that truck. The, uh, the Nitto tires here were up in smoke big time, and this very sticky racetrack was literally just tearing them to shreds. Well, okay, Sean, what do you think's left of the uh, Nitto Terra Grapplers that were on that truck? Well, I think he's gonna be really good for the rest of the racing because he now has slicks on the, uh, so the track should be really good. He owned this whole day last year and he's, he's having a rough day and I think you know Iceman as we would have referred to him last year I think we're starting to see him melt a little bit so yeah. uh, the heat miser showed up this year <laughs> yeah Ryan Anderson comes up to the starting line in the big red Ford Ryan we have seen uh, tire smoke we've seen guys sideways uh, <laughs> what are you thinking I'm just gonna try and roll into it build some boost here roll into it and See if you can't keep them all planted and uh, hit the nitrous, probably 300 foot. You think the suspension's gonna help you or hurt you being up high as you are? Uh, you know, it might transfer good, right? <laughs> there you go. Sounds good, man. We'll be waiting for the nitrous to come in. Good luck. Thank you. and I would call that a successful run. We saw very little tire smoke. The truck was very easy out of the hole, but like he said, he was gonna hit the nitrous at about 300 feet, and he did. You heard that thing roar to life at about 330 feet down the drag strip, and it stayed well under power to the finish line. Again, I can't give it elapsed time because even I don't have it at this point, but just from watching and seeing the other competitors, that was one of the quickest runs of the day. All right, man. So Shiloh Ellingford, this morning you said this truck had never towed a trailer. They went out and uh, damn near won the trailer towing obstacle course. Uh, have you drag raced this truck before? I have not. Not with this setup. The truck's uh, relatively short. It's designed for dynos, but we'll see what it'll do. I'm pretty nervous watching the other competitors, but we'll see how the little thing goes down the track, hopefully straight. Cool. And if you have any concern as far as the drive line, what's, what, what kind of keeps you up here as far as you're worried about maybe a torque converter or a transmission with this kind of load on the back? What, what gets the most brunt of the... The, the abuse here? Um, I think the tranny will get a lot of abuse. Uh, it's pretty well fully built. The gears and everything's all done in it. So I'm, as far as drivetrain, I'm pretty confident it'll be fine. Well, cool. You're one of the few guys that has a truck that weighs about half as much as the trailer. So good luck, man. Thank, thank you.
Well, I'll tell you what, for a truck that was very light and not accustomed at all to pulling a trailer, he once again proved us wrong. We thought he was going to struggle with this competition. He didn't. Probably not the quickest ET of the morning, or the afternoon, I should say, but it was a solid run. You heard him roll into the throttle, and as soon as he punched it a couple times, it would immediately spin the tire. So uh, the discretion is the better part of Valor kind of strategy there, where as soon as the truck got unhappy, he got out of it and just made sure it survived. Next time we see this thing on the drag strip with no trailer behind it, that's when the big numbers will come up on the board. So after the dust and soot have literally settled, we have a winner in the 8th Mile Trailer Towing Competition. And that man's name is Danik St. Pierre from Quebec, Canada. He went 11.08 at 71 miles an hour in the 8th, pulling an 11,000 pound trailer. Amazingly, the margin of victory was only five hundredths of a second over second place finisher Matt Kaufman. So the two Cummins trucks fared the best in that competition, and it will be Danik St. Pierre getting all the points for winning here in the Trailer Tow 8th Mile Contest. To get your extended length DVD of the 2014 Diesel Power Challenge from Extreme Diesel Performance, visit www.extremediesel.com. That's www.extremediesel.com. To this point in the competition, most of the events of the Diesel Power Challenge have been about one truck at a time. What happens when we put two of them side by side on a drag strip and make them run heads up to the finish line? Your guess is as good as ours. It's going to be crazy when we go quarter mile drag racing at Bandemir, side by side, heads up, no breakout, big power and low ETs, and some of the toughest trucks in the country. Let them eat, up on the mound.